So I've looked into MetaZoo, and MetaZoo is a new card game. I think it started on Kickstarter. Rudy Chan is all in. Uh, Rudy Chan even has his own card on MetaZoo. So when Rudy was first promoting it, it seemed kind of sus, right? Because new card game, artwork looks terrible in my opinion. Looks like little children drew it. And you might think, oh, isn't Pokemon like that? Yeah, but Pokemon's a huge IP. You do realize the trading card game came after the TV show, which then came after, you know, before was the, uh, there was a Pokemon movie in actual theaters, right? And you compare it to MetaZoo, where it has no IP, and oh, of course, the Pokemon games, like Shining, what, Shining Diamond is coming out soon, so every year or every half year or every three months, you know, Detective Pikachu has a Pokemon game. There's other Pokemon games like Pokemon Rumble. There's seems to be another Pokemon app every other month uh, where you can dress up your Pokemon. I mean, it, there's so much IP around Pokemon today. It, Pokemon's a McDonald's. Pokemon is promoted on Oreo cookies, like General Mills, right? Has promo cards that are now valuable. You cannot compare the two IPs because MetaZoo is too new and it is, I, I promise you MetaZoo is not going to have a Pokemon game. I promise you MetaZoo is not going to have an anime series. I promise you MetaZoo won't be in a movie theater because the game doesn't, it doesn't make sense that way. I've looked at the MetaZoo cards. I've looked at the cost. If, and anything, this will be obvious. Had, if you invested early on, like Rudy Chan did, you made bank. You made absolute bank. The question now is, should I invest today at today's prices and hope it continues to go up? So I, I do give them all the credit. They've done a really good job marketing. I mean, they basically said, hey, Rudy, you know, we're going to make you a card. We're going to do some special promotions. You hype our game up, and that's exactly what he did. So they went to content creators. And that was a great marketing strategy that cost them almost nothing. And in fact, Rudy, it probably paid for the opportunity to sell cards from MetaZoo. And that's incredible. They went to every convention. They go to all the conventions that Pokemon is at. And they have a great booth. The booth is a very long line. They're giving out free product. They have the artist. It's done the right way. Uh, as a Magic player, I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, we don't have any of that stuff, right? Like, one of the biggest Magic content creator at the time, the quarterling, Jeremy, right? I mean, look at how Wizard of the Coast treated him. And then look at how MetaZoo treats Rudy. Hey, Rudy wants to sit down with the owner of MetaZoo? Great, we'll do it. We'll do hours and hours of sit down. Rudy wants his own card? Hey, we'll do it. Rudy wants his own little, you know, package? Hey, we'll do it. For Patreons, we'll do it. Whatever Rudy wants, we're going to do because he can bring and sell and hyper product, which is, should have been what Wizard of the Coast realized. I mean, look at how big the quarterling is today. You don't think Wizard of the Coast could have used that opportunity, a guy who loved magic, who spent hundreds of thousands, alpha, beta. You know, I met the quarterling. He's actually a really nice guy. He's a pretty reasonable guy. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, you got people, you got them encouraging them, you know, store owners to punch him in the face. To sucker punch him in the face. I mean, it's pretty crazy. So that's how Wizard Coast treats its content creators, right? <laughs> they exile them and then ban them for life and so on. And you got cheaters like Alex Bracidi, you know, and they don't, I've never, never ban him. And I, I would guarantee you he's not, I mean, he'll, he'll be back. I know he's a quote lifetime ban, but they removed the ban list. Because I always thought that was kind of weird that they had everyone's name and address and they would publish it. Like, there's got to be all types of privacy problems with that, right? Especially when you're saying this guy's banned for life. So Alex Pacitti will be back. I know. I know for a fact he'll be back winning MTG Arena tournaments under a different name. And then he'll expose himself a little later and you know, there will be a big controversy. Because IMTG Arena, it's not like you had to put your ID or anything, right? That would be ridiculous. So back to MetaZoo. Um, at this moment in time, my answer is no. I've looked at it in great detail with another one of my friends. 
we think the artwork just sucks. This isn't Teresa Nielsen. This isn't even Mike Chan. This is not even... I understand. You know, Meta Zoo is more akin to Pokemon. Pokemon, I carry it. I sell it. Do I play it as aggressively as Matt? No. But I will tell you, I, I really wish I had quit Magic and just done Pokemon. I'd be... I have like $10 million in Pokemon product now, but I did the reverse. So, it's so dumb, right? So dumb, I did the reverse. I spent a shit ton of money during COVID-19 on Magic cards and they barely went up in price. And then I, if I spent that same exact money on the stock market, which I've done very well on, or on Bitcoin or on anything, like anything but Magic cards, it would have gone to the moon. And so I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I missed an opportunity. So I'm really giving MetaZoo the full. So what MetaZoo has good? Good marketing. I think the people managing is good. I don't think there's as much of a uh, social justice policy that Magic the Gathering has. Magic the Gathering right now, I would not invest in it. I would invest in MetaZoo before Magic the Gathering. The question is, would I invest in MetaZoo before Pokemon? I think the answer is our stocks, you know. I think the answer is no. I made another $22,000 a day and I from stocks and it's just like what <laughs> so like, it doesn't even make any sense metazoo is a very interesting type of investment because i think if you were rudy chan and you got into it you made your millions and you're good to go and you're you're set to make more millions in the future but if you didn't get into it i think it's too hot right now to touch and that's my personal feeling i don't think i can buy into it at a price that i feel comfortable that this will go up so as you know, I tell you from any investment, it's not necessarily the price you sell at, it's the price you buy at. The most important factor is the price you buy at. I can buy, let's say Dragon Maze, one of the worst magic sets, but if I'm buying it for $10 a box, I guarantee you I can sell it for 50 a box. I guarantee it to you. So it's not necessarily the price that you sell at that really matters, it's the price that you buy at that is actually kind of your base set point. Uh, and then you go up from there, right? I mean, then it goes up, down. I mean, kind of depends, right? Anyway, so right now, no MetaZoo. I'm not into it right now. I think it's too high. It's too hot. And I don't like the um, the ratio of interactivity and the people building decks to the investors. I think if there's too many investors and there's no one actually like playing the game, I don't think that's a healthy place to be long term. Short term, I think you can flip it and make a ton of money. But the question is, is it going to outperform Bitcoin? Is it going to outperform stock market, S&P 500? Is it going to outperform Magic? Is it going to outperform Pokemon, sports cards? Obviously, we're big in sports cards now. And I don't know about that. Uh, I do like it better than Magic. I, you know, I've studied Flesh and Blood. Maybe I'll make another video about that because that's a good, I mean, it's kind of the same audience, really. But I don't like the fact that people are flipping things. And this is something that I personally don't like is you can go to a convention, buy some cards like sports cards. And then like, this is what every sports card YouTuber does. So the card at convention, let's say it's a thousand dollars, but the end they flipped it so many times, the card's like $5,000, but it's the same effing card. So it's like, you know, when Shasha T does it, it's like, you know, it's interesting entertainment, but I don't see that as sustainable. I mean, the card in two days, you know, uh, for the LeBron James card, it went from $30,000, which is what he paid in the beginning of the convention, to 38000 So he made $8,000 from the same card. And is there really that much, that much, you know, profit in this that so you can continue, you could go to all these shows, flip, 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 I mean... There's no love for the hobby, right? Because you're you're buying a card one day, you're flipping it two days later. Can this really continue if it's just a bunch of flippers? I don't know the answer to that. My guys, I would assume that you would run out of flippers eventually. 